This video is made possible by patrons like Jane D. Cheers Jane. If you sign up now you can get an exclusive TLDR lanyard absolutely free. Find out more at the end of the video. You might not know it, but the European Union is undergoing an existential crisis with several member states beginning to question the supremacy of European law, including the likes of Poland, with this case in particular risking Poland's very place in the European Union. So in this video we'll take a look at just why a battle for Europe is brewing in Poland and what it all means going forward for both Poland and the Union. This all stems from Poland and the European Union not seeing eye to eye recently, with the conflict developing since 2015. A matter of months after the Law and Justice Party took control of Poland, the European Commission started to become extremely wary of their moves against some of the core principles of the European Union, most notably the principle of the rule of law. Following reform to the Constitutional Tribunal and a move to give the government power to control the media, the then Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker announced a debate on the state of the rule of law in Poland, the first stage on the long-winded proposal to bring in punishments against Poland. In 2018, the government attempted to purge the Supreme Court by pushing through a law to lower the retirement age of judges from 70 to 65, forcing out the head of the Supreme Court. Then, in February 2020, Poland began to restrict just what issues judges could refer to the Court of Justice of the European Union, effectively keeping more within the country. Poland's tension with Europe came to a head in March, when the Polish Prime Minister formally put a motion before Poland's Constitutional Tribunal, asking them to rule on what has precedence, EU law or Poland's own constitution. Almost immediately the EU was concerned. The Commission stressed that Poland's move to question the supremacy of EU law was a dangerous one. In early June, they formally requested that the Polish government withdraw the motion as it contested fundamental principles of EU law, in particular the primacy of EU law. The Polish Prime Minister point-blank refused. Poland's Deputy Justice Minister doubled down on the motion, stating, this is not only about Poland, the issue is that some European officials are trying to give the EU greater competences without changing the treaties. This is very dangerous because it will implode the EU from within. Poland's current Ombudsman for Citizens' Rights, which was actually ousted by the Constitutional Tribunal in April, highlighted that testing the supremacy of EU law was a slippery slope. If the Constitutional Tribunal follows this path, it will be playing with fire, fire that sooner or later will lead to Poland's removal from the EU. This statement is particularly scaremongering. While the EU does have a mechanism to punish a country through Article 7 of the Treaty on the European Union, known as the nuclear option, there is no mechanism to actually kick a member out of the EU. According to a working paper by the European Central Bank, while perhaps feasible through indirect means, a member state's expulsion from the EU, or EMU, would be legally next to impossible. As the paper goes on to highlight, to actually establish a mechanism to kick a member state out would require amending the EU's treaties. The issue here is that in order to amend the very basis of the EU requires unanimity, and Poland and Hungary especially are unlikely to agree to it. Anyway, on Wednesday, the Constitutional Tribunal heard the first of two cases. Over the past five years, the Law and Justice Party has been enacting a number of reforms affecting the judiciary, most notably here the introduction of a disciplinary chamber, to, as the name suggests, discipline judges if need be. Last year, the CJEU ordered Poland to suspend the chamber, leading the chamber itself to formally request the Constitutional Tribunal to rule on whether interim orders from the CJEU were even compatible with Poland's constitution. In fact, a matter of hours before the tribunal came to a final decision, the CJEU issued another order to suspend the disciplinary chamber, something it clearly ignored. The panel of judges, led by a former Law and Justice Party MP, ruled that the CJEU interim measures were not compatible with Poland's constitution, essentially saying they are not binding on Poland. The mere fact of a Polish court putting their own constitution before EU law is seen by many as a direct affront to the EU's top court, and, by ruling against it, immediately questions the primacy of EU law. It's as if Poland has turned around and gone, my country, my bloody rules, to the EU. 
But Poland isn't the only country testing the primacy of EU law. At the very same time the Commission asked Poland to withdraw its motion, the Commission finally launched legal proceedings against Germany. In May, Germany's Constitutional Court had ruled that the ECB had overstepped its mandate, directly conflicting with the CJEU, who had ruled to the contrary. We covered this legal battle in more detail in another video, and it's an issue that may embolden the likes of Poland and Hungary in their fight against the European Union. In fact, the EU's own Justice Commissioner said that it could pose a real threat to the very architecture of the European Union. If you don't stop that, you will have more and more possibilities for member states to challenge the primacy of EU law and the competence of the ECJ. The difference here is that Germany's test of EU law and primacy is relatively limited. For now, it's simply concerned whether or not the ECB were actually staying within their own mandate. Whilst the German Constitutional Court disagreed with the CJEU, it did directly confront the primacy of EU law. The Polish case is much, much broader, not necessarily appealing to an individual case, but to the broader principles of whether EU or Polish law should take precedence when they conflict. And this is why the ruling is seen as particularly dangerous. In the words of The Economist, if Poland elects to ignore judgments of the EU's top court, then it amounts to de facto polexit. The country would be in the block but unbound by its rules. Such a situation would leave the EU in a tough spot. It has no military power to enforce its will, all it has is its legal order. If that is undermined, then so is the project. The main distinguishing feature between the EU and the likes of the UN, G7 and the OECD is that the EU and its courts have the power to make binding rulings and decisions. Remove that and, well, you don't really have much left. When the ruling was first announced, Guy Verhofstadt announced on Twitter, against the wishes of the vast majority of Polish people who want a European future, the populist governing PIS party is determined to take Poland out of the EU. Will anyone act to stop them before it's too late? Well, his prayers might be about to be answered in the forms of Mr Donald Tusk. The former president of the European Council has resumed control of the party he helped to found, Civic Platform, and whilst the next parliamentary elections are due to be held by 2023 at the very latest, Tusk may have a genuine shot to return to Warsaw and put Poland back on the European track. Recent months have seen the Law and Justice Party suffer from infighting, with the party's coalition last week losing its formal parliamentary majority. But what do you think? Is Poland really about to be embroiled in a battle for Europe? Should European Union law have unconditional supremacy over domestic constitutions? And, if not, where should the line of competencies lie? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As I said at the start of this video, we're running a Patreon promotion whereby every Patreon paying more than $5 a month can get an absolutely free, never for sale lanyard. To claim yours, just sign up to the TLDR Patreon and then click the link to the store. Signing up not only snags you a lanyard, but also gets you other perks like early access to videos, exclusive live events, merch discounts and more. Find out what you can get and sign up by clicking the link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.